day 24 of 24 days of random awesomeness. It is the day of Christmas Eve, the 24th of December. And uh, I'm getting very festive here. Um, yes, everything calms down. Uh, people are gathering at home, starting cooking already. And um, yes, I spent my day in the man cave to show the last bag of um, this series for this year. Um, yes, that's a good call that this thing goes out because I need some space here. It is almost a holiday. I should drink a nice beer. And uh, in this case, a Christmas beer. And uh, here where I'm from, um, like every brewery makes its own Christmas beer. In this case, it is Batin that I will deguste. Butter Christmas beer. Cheers, guys. Mm. That's always something good. Yes. And um, as uh, we are not yet a holiday, I will also eat my lunch, which comes from a gas station. And uh, those things are always a pain to open. Let's get the knife. Mm -hmm. So, this is uh, basically a local dish. This is called uh, Wein Sausis. They are two sausages and they are made with white wine. They're quite good. And um, that yellow sauce, it's, uh, it's a mustard sauce. And then you get some carrots and some mashed potatoes. And I got me a piece of bread as well. I'm pretty hungry. I haven't eaten anything today. No time on the holidays. Mm. Mm -hmm. Quite good sausages. And very buttery, nice um, mashed potatoes. Mm. A real holiday feast. Let's get a piece of this roll. Mm. By the way, this roll is filled with chorizo. Quite good. Very herbal kind of sausage. A little bit of a sour touch to it from the white wine. And a nice tangy um, mustard sauce. I don't know if this is a meal that came up um, after the Second World War here or if this is a more modern thing. But I think the whole elderly generation here, they know this dish, so... Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now, full of power, let's dive into today's bag. The last bag of the 24 days of random awesomeness. And um, this one, let me grab it, is um, packed as a gift because, yes, Santa came a little early, but he's always early to get to the man cave and uh, to see what new stuff is lying around on this bench here. Let's dig right into it. What is this? Um, uh, I think, yes, I think that this... Um, this thing is out of the 90s again, if I remember correct, because Santa already told me what's in there. <laughs> well, um, yes, let's dig right into this. Uh, let me grab some uh, broken scissors that I have to open with two hands, and then we cut this thing open. And uh, let's see. What do we have? Hmm, now, looks like an old steam engine, an old, kind of old steam engine. Well, the principle is very old, but the steam engine, especially this thing, I remember my dad bought this at one point. He just, he walked in one day having this thing. And um, yes, what is this? Well, it's a uh, really functional, a real functional um, little steam engine quite a cool thing and uh, I haven't opened this for at least 20 years it's pretty old and it stands uh, at my parents house in the cellar and uh, yeah I actually had to find this back it wasn't that easy luckily my dad knew where it was now what is this um, well what do we have here we have multiple things that comes with it some accessories basically like a little drill press miniature drill press that can be powered with steam. As I said, this is a real steam engine, so um, you can power things with uh, with steam. And uh, you have a little saw like this, where you can saw stuff. And of course it's a toy, uh, but it's quite a nice toy, uh, quite something original. Something that I probably would, um, yeah, 
give my children for Christmas. Uh, because it is not just uh, playing around, but it's also about physics and stuff. We have some espit. This is a dry fuel that we need. And then we have the main unit, the steam engine. If I can get this off, yes. There we go. The steam engine. So uh, we have some little accessories. I will put this box on the side for now. Now let's have a look first, maybe. And uh, a sip of beer. Mm. So I changed camera perspective so we have a better look how this thing looks and how it works, what it makes it tick. Well, uh, steam engines in general came up, um, I think, 1690, 1698, 1698 or something. So a pretty old uh, technique, like the first engine ever. Um, yes, and, and this is a miniature um, that basically works like the real thing. It's uh, it's all metal. It's a German brand. Um, I checked on the internet. I think you can order these um, like worldwide. Um, this is the old smoky kind of. Um, they have like stationary uh, uh, steam um, factories and stuff like that as well. But um, I think um, the this one has like both advantages. You can drive stuff with it, but it can also drive around. So um, yes, let's have a look. What do we have? We have, um, well, we have a little valve here. That's the steam well valve. We have our reservoir, our water reservoir here. So the water gets boiled and then we can open this, which will drive this piston here. And um, yes, and this piston is uh, driving this flywheel and the flywheel spins and then um, we have some uh, gears here and you have uh, some sort of a clutch that you can move over so you can engage the wheels. You can see that they are spinning or you can disengage them to drive, for example, this uh, this drill press as I showed before. And the drill press, for example, uh, really works. You have a real drill in there. You have a little leveler here so you can move your working piece up and down and it gets driven by a belt, by this belt that is unfortunately a bit torn up and a bit, uh, yeah, broken. I was young probably when I played the last time with this. Uh, what else do we have? Of course, yeah, we have the flywheel. Then down here, let's turn this around or in here, then you can see it. We have a st steering wheel that actually really works. We have a little window down here where you see the water level. Then we have a, a pipe, a, st um, a whistle, a steam whistle uh, with a little leveler here so you can open this and uh, this is quite loud, I remember. <laughs> and uh, down here uh, you have your fire chamber or your burning chamber with this little inlay thing where you put some uh, aspid uh, dry fuel in there. And um, then on this side, what do we have? We have a little uh, valve here. This um, uh, is where you put the oil in because these things, of course, need a lot of oil to in order to make them run properly. And here you can see that the steering wheel actually works so um, it works by this chain and it's get driven by this in German it's called a, a Schneckenantrieb it's like a snail a s s snail um, gear I don't know if you if that's the right uh, expression anyhow um, yeah let's try to fire this thing up as I said this thing hasn't been uh, running for over 25 years let's take off the little chimney so we have a little bit more space here to work with. I will zoom in a little bit like that. So we first have to undo this valve. And by the way, this thing has a little overpressure valve that can open in case there's too much pressure in the chamber. So this thing won't explode. You see that's the, the fill gauge where we put the water in. We have a little funnel. And um, this thing runs with distilled water, not distillated, distilled water, especially for this uh, purpose. And a little syringe here. Let's uh, fill this thing up. So let's put some water in. And uh, in the meantime, of course, I have to check on the other side. I will turn this around to see. And there you can see the water level. I don't know if you can see this there. But um, let me swap over to manual focus. Yeah, so I got me a little light, so we see what we are doing. And you see in here, you already see, I think, that there is water in there. But uh, of course, we need a little bit more, so I will continue filling this up. And uh, I have to 
keep an eye on both things, <laughs> the syringe and the, the water level. And you see how it is filling up and I think we're basically not too bad. That should be quite fine. You see that we are a little bit over half full. So, because of course we need a little bit of space up here because um, we would need some steam to form. Let's take out the funnel and let's close this back up. And next we need some oil and we need to oil every moving part in this thing. And I brought some machine oil um, because of course they offer a uh, their own brand of oil and probably it's a little bit more viscous than this one but it should work for this purpose so we will fill a little bit of oil in here and uh, a little bit of oil on every moving part we'll close this up right away and um, there is oil spillage with this thing that's a normal thing I mean the original ones, they were like splattering oil everywhere all the time. So, put a little bit of oil here and there. Every moving part gets a little bit of oil. Oil here and there. Now, next thing to do is we need some fire. One of my favorite things. We got a little bit of uh, aspid dry fuel. It's like the same thing you put into your camping stove or MRE stove. And you need two little blocks and they fit exactly in here. And then we light this on fire and put this in our machine, in our steam engine. Let's see if this old stuff still burns after so long. Because I think if they are based on methaldehyde, they probably absorb some moisture over the years. But for now, they seem to burn. That's good. Okay, so uh, let's turn this back around. And we have our thingy burning. And then we will insert this right up to the, to the ass of the, <laughs> of the steam engine. Like this, yes. And now we need to wait. It's a thing that you need to clean after using, and uh, it's a bit like the original. I mean, it's not only working as an original, but it's also the cleaning that is like, like the original. You have to clean this thing, get rid of all the oils because they become sticky over the years. So I move this a little bit by hand, so no friction there. And it's, the oil really does something because now it really spins very easily. Before, well, after 25 years, this thing was uh, a little stiff and now it runs like, like the first day. And the water in there is starting boiling. So we are building up some pressure now. Of course, we have to take care not to overpressure this thing. Um, well, let's turn this around. And uh, we can start maybe launching, launching it. Let's see if this works. Let's zoom out a little like that. So I would open the valve to the thing and you see it already starts moving. Well, it needs a little bit more pressure, but 
There we go. Some more fuel in here. The interesting thing as well is you can run this thing in both directions. Like uh, when I start the pressure, I can spin it rather this way, or I can spin it the other way. So this is your forward and backward gear. So when I engage now the wheel, or the tooth to the wheel, we'll move it a little bit further back so we have a little bit more space to cruise here, like this. And now when I turn this on, and I spin it this way, it will start moving. Steam powered, no batteries required. Quite awesome, at least in my opinion. I love these things. We are up on boiling again and uh, I um, just saw that on this drill press unfortunately there's a belt missing going from this pulley over those two pulleys up here. Um, so I would have to drive this directly because I only have this one belt left and uh, already this one is pretty torn up as well so I don't know if this works but you have to engage this here and then it will go over here and I think usually you have to cross it once the belt um, but uh, in this instance I, I just keep it like this let's open the valve let's make this run and you see it spins and uh, let's use this wood, wooden spoon and let's drill a hole through through it if this works um, maybe a little bit more tension maybe and of course we have this thing we need this thing to be running in the right direction Let's see if we can drill a hole through this spoon. I don't think so because the belt is just, the belt isn't good anymore. But um, let's try the saw. Let's try the saw right here. And that's basically the same thing, but we have a direct drive. That's a good thing. So no missing belts for that one. And uh, let's uh, hook this up here and then we cross it once and then we engage it to our saw like this. Now let's see if we can get this saw running. I will put in my lunchtime spoon. Maybe we can saw this through with steam power. Now let's try this. One of the coolest toys, in my opinion, not only for children, but also for grown-ups. I really like this thing and I played around so long with it that it became dark already outdoors. And um, unfortunately, I could not make these things run, but I remember them working and um, yeah, the belt is just too torn up. I used, I tried it with some rubber bands, but it's not working. I remember drilling some holes in some belts of wood and cutting it with a saw. Of course, it's not a Dremel tool, it's a, it's a, it's a toy, right? So it's just, um, yeah, to make, um, also especially to make children see how things worked in the time back a couple of um, hundreds, hundreds of years. I hope you enjoyed this whole series because this was the last episode of the 24 days of random awesomeness. It is the 24th of December. So I will wrap up right now. I will drive home. I will have dinner and um, celebrate the Christmas holidays. I hope you do too. So I wish you Merry Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, wherever you are in the world, a Happy New Year. And um, if you like these videos, give me a comment and a thumbs up. So maybe I can come up with some more stuff and can do something similar next year or another day. I hope you enjoy it and uh, I wish you a nice evening. And there's not much more to say then. Until then, see ya.